all the studs that helped you or hurt you and all the duds that hurt you or helped you we're discussing in today's episode. You're going to love it. Make sure you leave a comment, tell us how it went for you, and subscribe to the channel so we're always with you all season long. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. For those who are nasty, that's the Fantasy Footballers <laughs> Podcast. I'm nasty, Mike. <laughs> I know. I'm real nasty. Jason Moore. Always, always nasty. Also joined by Jay Grizz, the cardboard bear extraordinaire, aka Jay Riz. <laughs> Handling his uh his win with dignity. Yeah, that's right. Big uh Did you forget? Big week for the bears out there. All oh. the all the the animals. Do, uh, the the wait. bears. <laughs> all the animals, all the bears out there. It's a big week for them. What 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 else did I miss? Are you just saying that when the team, the Chicago Bears, wins, it's a huge day That's for a huge the day species, for all bear kind. Which bear takes the most pride in a victory from the Chicago Bears? I would imagine brown bears. Is that not like I, what the I Bears no mascot idea. is? It's not a grizzly, right? I don't know. Someone find that out. Yeah. Is there a specific bear that the Chicago Bears lean into? Anyways, welcome to the show. <laughs> it's Monday, October 9th. Uh, we got one more game tonight, but we had another sensational weekend of football. Uh, quick. Oh wait, we got Staley Da Bear. No, no, his name is Staley. You're telling me his name is Staley Da Bear? That's what I'm seeing. Wait, What's I, your source? Oh, it is. I see it too. Staley Da Bear. Da ba D A. As in like the bit of Da, da Bears. Bears. Staley Da Bear. Well, which one came first? The mascot or the or the SNL sketch? I think the mascot. Duh, bears. All right. Well, check it out. Staley the bear resembles a grizzly bear. There we go. There's our fact of the evening. Uh, follow us on social, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, or follow us on X slash Twitter at the FF Ballers. I am at FF Hitman. The nasty one to my right is at Jason FFL, and you can find Andy at Andy Holloway. A lot of things to get into, but it is Monday, so mm, yes. Yes, you get the pinkies up. I'll start it here, Jason, with good Goddard. <laughs> he, yes, he was. Oh, how about Travis Muy Bien? <laughs> good delivery. Brees Hall of Fame. Oh, and you had Jamor Chase. <laughs> we got a lot of... Uh, uh, foreign language here. We got DJ Mi Amor. Oh, how lovely. Yes, but then there was the bad. Yeah, there's the bad, like JT's. <laughs> oh, hopefully you heard that one right. We got Naja Harris. Or, uh, CD on the lamb. Yes, thank you for indulging me, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blah Andre Stevenson. Or the best one of the week, Matt Burrito Farts. <laughs> Matt Burrito Farts. <laughs> so good. I mean, you know, he doesn't really have big boy pants. Right. But So the, a burrito fart would devastate yeah, those, his tiny little baby boy pants. Tiny pants are ruined with burrito farts. Uh, so real quick, I'll pull uh we, we already know from you two. Jeremy, are you familiar with the phrase on the lamb? I am. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we got at least half of us. Cause I that was my joke because I had C D and I'm like, What where is he? He must be on the run, what on the lamb, like an old timey mobster when you're on the run from uh from the man. But I had never heard of this yeah. on the lamb phrase. And half half the office had never heard this. Yeah, and I imagine half our audience hadn't but we do nothing if not educate here. Yes. Now you know that Staley Da Bear is a grizzly. <laughs> um and you know that on the lamb is an old timey reference yeah. for on the run. Where were you on that one, Kyle? Have you, have you heard, Kyle had to have heard that one. No. Never heard of it. Oh, gosh, dang it. Yeah. Oh, man. It's all the old dummies that know that phrase. <laughs> yeah, get, get some culture in your life. Let's move on to the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. 
All right, if you happen to miss it, JT's, he uh, seems like he won because he got healthy, he got ready to play, and the Colts gave him a three-year, $42 million contract extension. He's now the third highest paid running back in average salary behind Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara. And he <laughs> ruined people this week. I mean, ruined them. And not just, like, this news of him getting oh the contract gosh. is part and partial to why he ruined people. Because, like, I know I uh, I love, there is a bit on this show that has gone back from the NFL draft where I love to dunk on Zach Moss and talk about how untalented he is. And ho hopefully we've equivocated enough that, that that is mostly a bit. We've told you to start him. No one was starting him this week. Right, like I can't imagine. I, I know. I, I'm sure that. Look, I get it. We're gonna get screenshots of no. I definitely started Zach Moss. I get it. Some people did, but we're talking about that is a you. Did you want to? I'm, and that, I, that's the question. Like, what did happened you want more? To what start? happened more? Zach Moss was started by the teams that had Zach Moss, or Zach Moss was cut oh. this weekend by the teams that had Zach Moss. I don't think people would be cutting Zach Moss. You still want valuable backups, but. Because he came out and got that bag of money, and they the team came out and said he's fully healthy, ready to go. They did he's say in we're great gonna, shape. We're we're gonna work him in, but the work in was. <laughs> well, here's was here's here's the truth. Very slow. Zach Moss looks unfreaking believable. I mean, like we're watching this together, and I'm just <laughs> I'm just eating my words over and over and over. He's the best running back of all time. I've never seen. A player look better than Zach Moss does right now. And the whole game, I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, is Jim Irsay just super upset he gave this bag oh, of money so to Jonathan mad. Taylor? Like, you don't need him. You've got Zach freaking Moss, who is great. So, um, apparently, uh, years of being bad. It's it's really funny because I feel like on, on the timeline of life, my Zach Moss hatred, mm -hmm. it's been a huge win. Yes. Huge win. Yes. Like people wanted to draft him so high in rookie drafts and they were all in. I was all out. And unequivocally, he was a bust. Yes, 100%. I mean, if you drafted him, he got him, traded. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh he was he was a bust for Buffalo running back 45 52 63. He's just not been good. And then I mean, I expect the PED pop any minute. <laughs> I don't I don't know what happened, <laughs> but he's legitimately good. He he's looks unbelievable he's hell look he's healthy he's in a scheme that works for his running style if you in case you missed it I mean he'll be in the studs but we're talking about it Zach Moss versus Tennessee a team oh yeah you cannot run the ball on they hadn't given up a hundred yard rusher in forever in a like a fortnight but who is the one so, yes. to get it done 23 for 165 and two including a 50 plus yard scamper for a giant touchdown at which point I shouted there he goes, and and Jason's like, oh, Jonathan Taylor is back. And then we catch the number and the name on the back, and it was Zach Moss. Yeah. And Jason's laughter was so pure and genuine of, like, this is such a ridiculous it thing. It made me so happy. Uh, some, <laughs> you know, look, sometimes you, yeah. you just want the world to burn, and seeing that Zach Moss dominated was so frustrating, and I, I really – I, I do empathize with everyone who had to make that decision. You had both players, or even you just had Zach Moss, who's been good. Jonathan Taylor's back. It's a bad matchup against Tennessee. Like I would, I would personally have benched him without a shred of doubt if I could. Yes. If I had another pivot option, and I know Andy posted a, a tweet with tons of screenshots of people that did get to start Zach. Congratulations. Moss, but, um, you, usually everyone was backed into that, forced to start him. He also added thirty receiving yards, so he had. Almost 200 yards from scrimmage. And two touchdowns. I mean, it's unbelievable. The RB6 on the season right now. Bears running back Khalil Herbert. Jay Grizz, cover your ears. Ankle injury from Thursday night was confirmed. It was a high ankle sprain. He should miss multiple weeks. The Bears will be interesting to talk through tomorrow on waivers because Roshan Johnson left that game early with a concussion. He's in protocol. We don't know. But so far this year, pretty much anyone that's gone into protocol yep. has missed one week at least. So yes. that's my expectation right now. They they also went and signed – I um, forget who it was, but they signed an, a, a practice squad guy already after the game. So I think they're anticipating they'll be without him, which means Deonta Foreman, mm -hmm. he's going to get his shot. Uh, Saints wide receiver 
He was seen going through an extensive pregame routine with a trainer. I mentioned this on Sunday Live of this looks like a guy who was not healthy and his quarterback is not healthy. Pretty sure you didn't say his name. Chris Olave. There you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> so just one of the Saints wide receivers. Chris Olave. Uh, Christian Olave. And it was, I don't know what to make of this because the team is not making anything of it. But he ended up with a stat line of 2 for 12 with a touchdown. So not the worst possible thing that can happen. But it was, it's it's something worth monitoring. And then from Sunday, Anthony mm. Richardson, the Colts quarterback, hurt. Unfortunately, yet again, initially diagnosed a grade three AC joint sprain. We're looking at he could miss a month or more, probably ends up on the IR. He's going to get a second opinion, and then we'll go from there. Daniel Jones, Giants quarterback, he left in the fourth quarter with a neck injury. He did not return. He will be marked as iffy and questionable. He will be getting an MRI. Travis Kelsey, if you saw the play, he went down in a heap on a non-contact injury, and it was you could feel – Fantasy souls leaving their body as Zeus went down in a heap, mm -hmm. and it was oh crap. Then the replay showed it what well, was his ankle. He was yeah, mad at first. I thought yes. it was like an Achilles. The way he went down, it seemed like one of those classic non-contact injuries where he he didn't do enough. You're looking to see if the calf rippled. Yeah, exactly. But then on the the slow mo replay, you saw it was he twisted, he rolled his ankle, so he goes to the locker room. Um, I, I will say this with him. Well, he, so he got called in the locker room by Taylor Swift. She said, shake it off. He oh, did. God. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh, I don't, guys, I don't, how do I No, you don't need any buttons unless you here. I got the button for you. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. Anyways, he came back, finished oh, the game. The That's the only one I can find. Okay. That's garbage. <laughs> it was garbage, but that's <laughs> kind of what we do here sometimes. Uh, he did come back, finished the game, played great, got a touchdown, touchdown, was awesome. I don't personally believe that this is a guarantee that he plays this next week. We we have seen this many, He's many on th Thursday night. That's what I was going to bring up. He's got a very short week, and we've seen this a lot of times. Like When you first roll your ankle, you could tape it up and play through it. But then once you rest, it swells. Mm -hmm. So it's just something to monitor tomorrow. We'll be talking about potential tight end pickups just to be prepared. The, it's actually kind of nice that he's Thursday because you will know ahead of the entire yeah, slate you can you can make a pivot. Justin Jefferson exited in the second uh, half with a hamstring injury. We had the towel over the head on the mm -hmm. sideline. So if you follow that narrative of a player's body language saying, I am hurt for realsies. Yes, they were down seven in an important must-win game against the Chiefs, and he was... He couldn't know, go. Yeah, so that's... I mean, that that isn't science or medicine, <laughs> but I... You know, history says he's probably going to miss some time. Cardinals, Cardinals running back James Conner, he exited with a knee injury off of... It was a, it was a man run, and then he got hurt, and he did not come back. But... What was so so weird about this? So he's he's injured. He mm -hmm. hurt his knee. He uh, gets ruled out. He's sitting on the sideline. And then to go to halftime, he runs into the locker room. He doesn't walk or take a cart. He sure. like he's jogging into the locker. Maybe room. Maybe he was testing it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe. May but I would. I, I mean, it, is that a good sign? I don't know. I um, who knows? Tank Dell. Uh, he Texans wide receiver. He left very early with a concussion. Juju Smith Schuster. He also had a concussion. Left a situation to monitor. Mm -hmm. Devon Achan, the the greatest running back in the history of the NFL, through two games played or whatever we're at. No one, no one could stop this guy. It's unbelievable. He touches the ball and he gets ten or ten to seventy. Yes, a and every play <laughs> seems like he's just. He's just so much faster than the defenders, and, and this scheme is a perfect fit for him. Um, so far, the last three weeks, he was the running back one, the running back four, the running back four, but he did roll his ankle. Yes. He did not play again. In That that was his final snap of the game, and it you know kind of reminds me of what we saw with Austin Eckler. Yeah. Where it was like... it wasn't, This one was a blowout. It was 31 to 13, so he did not come in after the, the injury incident, so... We have not heard anything else. We're just we we try to catch all the information that we possibly can, so that you're 
the listener you're in on it as early as possible, mm-hmm. but it's just that is something to monitor. And Monday Night Football, Devontae Adams is expected to play. He's been listed as questionable all week, missing practice all week. It, like, answering Devontae Adams' questions on Sunday Live was it was impossible. Of like, I have no clue. I, I have no do, clue if he's going to play, but I do think he, he says plays. he will. He's saying he will. He got this injury last game, went to the locker room, got a shot, came back out and played. So I think he's going to get a shot pregame and play. We've seen him do those type of things before. It is an injury where you usually miss a week, but uh, he's a tough guy, and I, I I think he'll be out there. If he's not out there, hopefully you have a pivot option uh, like Jaden Reed. Sure. Uh, someone like that. <laughs> Renfro. <laughs> I mean, sure. I, like, I, I mean, even, yeah. Your options are very limited. Uh, but hopefully you don't need it, or hopefully he plays and he gets you what you need. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, Justin Fields was great. We got it. He destroyed me. Josh Allen continues to have a tremendous fantasy football season. They lost. Mm -hmm. They didn't really look particularly good. I think they scored 20 points. They did nothing in the first half. Right. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah, he was awesome again for fantasy. 359 and two also had a rushing touchdown. Jared Garf. (laughs) Jared Garf. In one of the, like, most – his his was so interesting to me because – Amon Ross St. Brown is out. Jameer Gibbs is out. It's on the on paper, it's man, David Montgomery is going to have a huge game, which he did. And Jared Goff is how do you play him in this scenario? And honestly, he 20 for 236, but he threw three touchdowns and he what a rush did he have a rushing touchdown? Yeah. I'm yeah, I am it, misremembering that. So I mean, they blew the socks off of the Carolina Panthers, who looked yeah, had a terrible. Touchdown. And uh, did did you see the play? Uh, um, Josh Norris tweeted this out. We when we're watching the games, a lot of times we don't have sound on certain games, mm-hmm. so I I, I missed it live. Um, but there was a play where they direct snapped to the running back, but the quarterback Goff was lined up under center. He was standing behind, and they snapped the ball between through his legs straight to the oh, running no, back. I missed that one. It was wild. I've never seen something on like purpose. That. Yeah, that, they, that was the play. It was it was pretty wow. neat design. Yeah, I did not. I'll you have get to, to play with crazy things when you're you know beating someone down forty to whatever it was. Yeah. So Jared Goff at home, it continues to be someone that you can play. He's not necessarily been fantastic on the road, but. At like, home, he just he throws more touchdowns. He is a perfect, perfect streamer because he's so predictable. Here's what's going to happen. He's going to go on the road to Tampa Bay. Don't play him. He's going to go on the road to Baltimore. Don't play him. Three weeks from now, he's at home in a plus matchup against the Raiders. Absolutely start him. That, I mean, it, it's so nice when a guy can do what the expectation is, and Goff has been great at that. Jalen Hurts. Over 300 passing yards, passing touchdown. A huge day on the ground, 72 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. Desmond Ritter. So, so wild. 329 passing yards, one tutty. He had a rushing touchdown as well. The reason he, it's he wild. Was, he was 28 for 37, and he he looked He looked good. He looked good. So it, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't some crazy stat padding like, oh, uh, screen – where a wide receiver housed it and bailed him out, like Kyle Pitts had eleven targets. He, we noticed it right off the bat. Yeah, you, you pointed it out, like you know, it, we were five, six plays into their their side of the ball, and Mike's like, "Dude, Desmond Ritter's like looking good," and then we just keep paying attention. He looked great. Now, I think it was just his day. It I, could I'm be. Not, I, I, you know, when you've got a a sample size, I mean, obviously he's a he's a young player. It's early in his career. Maybe he can level up also this was against the houston texans not a not a yeah but it's a devastating team, defense but it's a team that generally our fantasy quarterbacks do not have a ton of success yeah he, because but, you can run on them so much which they were their, their run game was not what we expected yeah it was it was uh 
it was a pretty cool game, though. They uh, The Atlanta Falcons pulled out the last-second victory. Brock Purdy, he had four touchdowns this time. Uh, so, he, I mean, 250-2 and two is what we normally expect from him, but he had four passing touchdowns. In four-point leagues, he's currently the QB5. He does play Cleveland on the road next week. Not necessarily the best situation. Yeah, and, and that was against the Cowboys' defense. So it was a – I mean, that was a big game for the 49ers who look like a an unstoppable juggernaut at the moment. They really, really do. I mean, they look absolutely unbeatable. I, I mean, I the, their defense is – I don't know how they hit harder than every other defense in the league, but every tackle looks like just so punishing. And their, and their defense – I don't even know that it's the strength of their team. Their offense might be <laughs> right. better than their defense. Yeah, the the first drive with the scripted plays was I mean it was perfection against the Cowboys. Sam Howell, it was the Thursday night game. Andy started the week, but he came through with a big performance. And then here we go. Oh man. Joseph Burrow, thirty six of forty six, three hundred and seventeen and three. I believe Jamar Chase had about ninety percent of that production there. But the point is he played the Cardinals on the road, 300 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, a good completion percentage, gets to play Seattle next week. Where where are we? Our, our approach with Joe Burrow this weekend was more of a do you absolutely cannot drop Joe Burrow because he's an elite, talented quarterback, You, I, but we get it if you want to bench him this week. I mean, I, I, I think that, honestly, our advice was more you should bench him. Um, so I would imagine most people did not – play him he did have a pretty good game um are you so, right back in versus Seattle yeah I think because it's a good matchup against Seattle I'm 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 okay playing him we you know we said don't drop him because we know he's going to get back we just don't know is that going to be one week or four weeks from now um the Cardinals defense is not great so maybe some of it was just bad play they they don't have anyone on the roster that can stop a Jamar Chase right right so yes. that's the issue Seattle does Seattle has some some guys in their secondary that, that can give him a little bit of a harder time. So maybe it's more the Arizona matchup, but what what we wanted to see and what we were waiting for with Burrow was, does he look like he's throwing the ball well? Can he move in the pocket? There was a great uh, play where scrambled to his right to buy some extra time, threw it back across his body to the end zone for Jamar Chase. It looked like classic vintage Joe Burrow. And then, even late in the game, he scrambled for a first down. He ran the ball, and w when you're doing that, it's like, okay, he's not hampered. He had a 10-yard run that was like, y y I don't think you do that if your calf is really, really bothering you. He said after last game his calf was good, so I'm I'm okay with Burrow now. I'm, I'm back in. So he gets Seattle this week, um, then he's on the bye week, but then it's San Francisco and it's Buffalo. Brooks is bringing up, do you – are you looking at moving Joe Burrow, like taking this moment – of saying no, the elite quarterback is is back in action. I mean, I don't know if I could trade. High, I don't know what quarterback you're gonna get back or or whoever you have on as your your backup. Yeah, I mean, if if I could trade high, I would, but that would require getting you know another top flight type of quarterback. I mean, I don't I don't know if it, every league is so different, and and you know someone might value Joe Burrow's name so much more than Justin Fields despite the two massive performances they might be thinking oh my gosh I'm parlaying Justin Fields two big performances into getting Joe Burrow because he was injured right. and they you know for me personally I would much rather have Justin Fields than Joe Burrow so if I could make a trade like that I would do it gonna take a quick break back with the running back studs How'd the weekend go for the Deucer Alley, uh, aside from Owl, who dismantled me on Thursday night? How was your guys' fantasy weekends? Brooksy? Not bad. Uh, uh, depends how uh, Devonta Adams. I'm, uh, I'm ah, waiting to okay. see. You're on tonight. Adams' watch. How many points you need? Um, I have an advantage, but I, my opponent has Christian Washington, Watson as well. Oh. So, yeah, that's what I got All right, going and on. then the Rap Scallion, you doing all right? Well, my Burrow... Uh, Chase stack actually worked oh, out really well, right. but I'm still facing DJ Moore and Montgomery, so it comes down to tonight and uh, okay. Josh Jacobs. So we'll All see. Right. All right, hey, Jacobs should have a, a pretty good game at the running back position. Travis Etienne, <laughs> the a very strange game. Him and Ken Walker are very like 
Mm-hmm. The parallels between these these two guys is like they're the same person. They, of, they, I've never I have never ahead. seen them in the same place. <laughs> I've never seen yes. them in the same place at the same time. Like just terrible runs, getting stuffed. Nothing, nothing. The the run game is absolutely shut down. Oh, huge fifty yard play with a touchdown. Shut down, shut down. Another huge play. Both of these play, both Kim Walker and Travis Etienne were uh, s- viewed as riskier draft picks. Which guilty, I I felt like Travis Etienne was going to see a lot more competition from Tank Bigsby. Uh-huh. Uh, and we st- we felt the same thing with uh, Walker with Walker with and- Charbonnet and Ken Walker and uh, and Travis Etienne are dominating. At- Etienne is the running back four on the season. It was 26, 136, and two, and involved in the passing game as well. Zach Moss, we kind of covered him. He's just, he's, I mean, he's elite. What, but, do, you, but, what do you do no, with but Zach that, Moss? So that is what the do you question. Do? That is the question. What do you do next week? Like, you know, I think, you, Jonathan, I think you play him. Jonathan Taylor played, do you know how his uh, snap it, percentage? It had to have been like low teens. Yeah, it was 15. Okay. 15% of the snaps. So this was all Zach Moss. It was it was Zach Moss's. I mean, he had twenty three carries, um, and a couple targets. He looked phenomenal. But what do you do? Like, I think you have to you, play so him at least one more week. You're playing him this next week. I think it'll be because it'll be just a split time. Shoot. Yeah. I, so I, you play him both. Yes, I I think I think. Oh man, I know it's. it's I have more confidence playing Moss. The question is, does it bump up to fifty fifty, or does it bump up to sixty forty? I mean, in you favor know, of Zach Moss. You know, at some point, yes, Jonathan Taylor will take over, and Zach Moss will go put because he's not going to be fantasy relevant if he's getting you know thirty five percent of the snaps. Um, but we don't know when that's going to be, and it, maybe it's a longer process than we expect. I, I'm very happy. I don't. It's weird to not to to be happy. You don't have the RB six on the season, but like going forward, it seems like just a mistake factory. It seems like a mistake factor. Yeah, it just seems like a a, a place oh, that of, is building mistake. Like choosing this, wrong. Yeah, like this last okay. week, everybody benched him. The majority of people benched him, as opposed to a steak factory. Ooh, that sounds great. Which would be my favorite place. <laughs> uh, Brees Hall, we're back, baby. Yeah. I mean, it was the Denver Broncos. Twenty-two for one seventy-seven rushing touchdown. Huge vintage Brees Hall breakaway run. Great to see that. 52% of the snaps, season high, 73% of the running back opportunities. We absolutely love it. Ian Harditz has a tweet. If you take away Brees's, Brees Hall's 72-yard touchdown, he would only be averaging 5.7 yards a carry. So he was great but front to yes. back in that one. Devon Achan, again, only on 11 carries, 11 for 151 and 1. He was over 100 carries on carry number 3. It was or hundred yards. Yeah, yeah. Yes, under of over a hundred yards uh on his third carry. He's just don't give him daylight. Raheem Mostert also had uh, another good game. Uh and just a reminder of Devon A. Chan, his his ankle monitor that situation. David Montgomery his, He has an ankle monitor? Monitor that situation. <laughs> his, well, I mean his ankle monitor, that situation that is would be a problem. A, that would be a much bigger problem. I don't I feel know like that, that would slow him down quite a bit. I don't think he would be allowed to play. Well, they would know where he is. <laughs> so I <laughs> think he'd be all right. Okay, maybe only home games. David Montgomery, 19-4-9 with a rushing touchdown. He did have six targets as well. He is the running back seven on the season. It's just going to keep going. Yes, Jameer Gibbs was inactive. It does not matter for David Montgomery. He, I think that his role is super-duper safe. Alvin Kamara, hey, three catches for 17 yards. Which, uh, what was last week? It was like 13 Thir- for 17 or it was, something? It was 13 for 33, I believe. So that this was much better. But he was also great on the ground, including a rushing touchdown. Hey, if you have, if you held oh. the faith and you spent the VAP and you played Jaleel McLaughlin, you got 9 for 68 on the ground. That's not the worst. You also got 3 for 21 with a touchdown through the air. Had Man. more opportunities than Samaj P. Right, he's got the juice. He looks really good. His touchdown reception. Yes, it was a difficult catch that most backs probably don't make. Kind of tips to himself, catches the ball, makes a juke, turns on the Jets, and he's in there. We we were we were talking about how um, you know in the studio we're like Javante Williams hasn't looked good this year. Samaj P. Ryan has looked worse. Like they 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 
are two good backs, presumably, coming into the year that you expected to be quality uh, fantasy assets because of their history. But they just haven't looked good, whether whether Javante is still working his way back from injury, he's not to 100% yet, and whether Samaj is just, you know, he's starting to age out. But it is possible here that Jaleel McLaughlin is able to play his way in to yes. be the starter even after Javante is back. At the very least, at the very least, he is going to ruin Javante's second half. You know what I mean? Like, you, you had the hope with Brees Hall, with Javante Williams, where they're going to get healthy. The second mm -hmm. half of the year will be much better. This seems like you're not going to be, you know, Sean Payton's not going to be putting Jaleel McLaughlin on the bench. Yeah, I I don't know that he can play his way to be the starter, but I think he probably has played his way that he will get opportunities when everyone's healthy. DJ Moore, the Thursday night game was spectacular. Jamar Chase, look, I get the Bengals. They took our advice. Yeah, uh, it works. What, what happens when you just throw at your best player the whole time? And 19 targets turned into 15 catches, 192 receiving yards, three touchdowns. He jumped up to the wide receiver six on the season because this was a 50 plus point explosion. Tyreek Hill. Had the nine targets, eight for one eighty one and one. Oh, worth worth noting as well. Tyreek Hill was I mean, you wouldn't know it's like if, if all all you saw was the box score. Tyreek Hill for another great game. He was kind of in and out mm -hmm. of the lineup over the second half, so he was dealing with something. It didn't completely keep him sidelined, and when he's on the field, he was still able to go full throttle. But something to monitor. Jalen Waddle also had ten targets, five for fifty with a score. George Pickens. Came through with another big game, including that huge touchdown to kind of take the victory away from the Baltimore Ravens at the end of the game. Oh, man. I can't wait to talk about the Ravens. But this isn't the section sure. for them. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it should be. It really it, should, it should be. It should be, but it is not. It can't it, because of the production. Adam Thielen, oh, 11 oh. for 107 ah. and 1. No, no, no. Oh, the garbage. This yeah. was. No. Yes. No. Yes. No way. Yes. This was the the touchdown was garbage time. The, there was so much stinky, fantasy, delicious garbage at the end of this game. There was uh, absolutely the the touchdown. This is the second time now he's had a garbage time touchdown that was pretty worthless for the outcome of the game, but very nice for fantasy. Yes, but uh, we can't call this a garbage time performance. He had thirteen targets. He was getting it done from the beginning of the game onward. He is the clear number one wide receiver there. I mean, it's me. You know, it's Adam Thielen, the young man. <laughs> what? What? What is that voice? That is the, that's the opposite of your old man voice, Mike. Because he's he's just getting it done. Yeah, he's. I mean, yeah. I, wouldn't you, you know want he is, to start is, him almost every I get week it. right now? I'm. The, <laughs> it's just frustrating when it's like if you had played against Thielen and you were watching the game, it would have been just daggers over and over right into your chest of like the, this game is done they lost so they lost 42 to 24 and that includes the garbage time touchdown from Thielen here's the thing that feels bad here's the thing but it's fantasy I know it's different they play Miami next week how much garbage time do you think they're gonna have in that game about three quarters probably four <laughs> and so Adam Thielen he's just gonna keep doing what he's doing they don't have Enough other good targets. Adam Thielen, week two, was the wide receiver 18. Week three was the wide receiver four. Week four was the wide receiver 22. This last week, the wide receiver five so far. Or, it's over. No, we got no, it. No, we got it. We got it. So, it's like, um, he's just, he, he has been really, really good. And it's on the back of just volume and targets. Do you want to know the last month, these four games? You want to hear his pace? Let me hear it. I think it'll blow your mind. He would be on pace the last four games for 187 targets, 153 receptions, 1,623 receiving <laughs> yards, and 12 touchdowns. I mean, he's been awesome. He has. Where was this last year? <laughs> I don't know, man. Goodness. Uh, like, when <laughs> it's if you haven't tracked, I was a big supporter of Adam Thielen last year when he – because I was the I'm when the he one, looked washed. Yeah, well, I was the one like coming into this draft season. I'm like, I don't think that he's too old. I think that he could still get it done, and he could not. 
to the point of the Minnesota Vikings said, no, no more money for you. You go get paid elsewhere. And he got a huge contract, which felt like a uh, a tax of a rebuild team. Yeah. And he's been great. And he's 33. Oh, man. I mean, he's he is he's old. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, he, can't, he can't keep this up all season. He's he not can't keep getting away with this. I, I feel I like. I don't know. I don't know. Do you, do you try to trade high? No. Okay. No, you keep right. you keep playing this. We get we you keep playing. Stephon Diggs, eight for one, twenty one and one. Gabe Davis, post my guy Dude. sleeper. Wide receiver twelve, six for a hundred with another touchdown. Wide receiver twelve yep. on the season. He yes. is a wide receiver one. He's gotten a, yeah, four straight touchdowns. Unbelievable. And speaking of old man strength, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, he, he looks so he hurt us. good. He hurt us clowning on him. I, eight for one forty. See, this is what I was talking about. You last episode, Andy was saying he uh, he felt like the film with Hopkins was bad. It blew my mind. I feel like Hopkins has looked like himself every week. He just you know the targets are have been bad. Ryan Tannehill targets, but he was awesome. I mean, watching this game, yeah. it was like every play it was like he was just making something special happen. Calvin Ridley, he's back, baby. We got seven for one twenty two, and this game included, I believe, a concussion scare. So he did he he missed just a little bit of time, but he was back. The Rams. Oh, baby. The King is back. <laughs> Cooper Cup. Don't worry about like He did not get JTs'd. Cooper Cup was the offense yet again. 12 targets. 8 for 118. So, 32% targets per route run. He is. That's outrageous. He, he is that dude. He was a wide receiver one his first week back. He's going to be a wide receiver one almost every week from here on out. But that did not stop. Anyone else. The, the rookie sensation, Puka Nakua. 11 targets, 7 for 71, and a touchdown. So, look, do not fear. I, Puka and Cooper Cup can exist in the same exact game. Yeah, uh, Tutu got a touchdown, so he it wasn't did. the end of the world there either. But, uh, yeah, it, Puka is going to be the Robert Woods. I think that's uh, established after Do we, we have the snap? Yeah, okay. I was going to – I don't know if something happened or not, but – the way that I saw that this this offense looking when when Cooper Cup came back, I thought no, Van Jefferson will be he'll be out on the field four percent of the snaps. So I don't know if something happened. I think they watched film. <laughs> I mean, genuinely, like Van Jefferson's been straight up <laughs> terrible the whole season. Someone's got to do the cardio routes. Puka and I think that was Tutu. Tutu played ninety percent of the snaps. Tutu was out there eighty nine percent. Cooper Cup ninety five percent. Puka one hundred percent of snaps this last game. Van Jefferson was the true odd man out. So you're gonna yeah. have you're gonna have probably some deep shots to two two. Have some value there. Hopefully, you know, in a pinch you could throw them in. But Puka and Cooper Cup, they're good to go. Yep, absolutely. Uh AJ Brown also had another big game. George Kittle. <laughs> Last week's start of the week. We we did tell people like you don't bench George, George Kittle because even though his floor is next to nothing, he is one of the rare people that can go out there and I don't know, put up like 67 yards and three touchdowns. Have a 100% touchdown rate on your receptions? Yeah. Three receptions, three touchdowns. And not for I, like 13 yards, though. I was so angry at George Kittle. You were playing against Kittle? No. Oh. I have Christian McCaffrey, oh, Jason. Oh, that's what it was. I, George, I, ever, I yes. saw you so angry over and over and over at George Kittle. I did not realize it was selfish Christian McCaffrey. Yes. I thought your, your, your anger was so real that I thought it was had to be just straight up against you no it just wasn't for you yes okay it was George Kittle is stealing you are the most selfish Christian McCaffrey manager <laughs> ever you really are you you demand 50 from him every week I demand greatness it is funny we we were going through the Monday Punday submission submissions uh submissions and Christian McCaffrey is the only player this week or pretty much ever who gets both good and bad yeah. like the the puns half of the puns were bad were angry at Christian McCaffrey who was the running back 13 on the week and was really good he just well, wasn't great he he scored I like, mean for fantasy he yeah, was yeah. he wasn't he wasn't a he wasn't a bust he's the running back 13. no no but, I, but I'm saying for for McCaffrey if he doesn't get that touchdown then this game is this game is a bust. Sure. So, which is that's not that's not common for McCaffrey to 
have to have the touchdown for it to really be co- well, like be solid. Yeah, yeah, I mean, put it this way: he's averaging twenty-seven fantasy points per yeah. game coming into this one, yeah. and he scored twelve point eight. He, that's what I'm saying. He could do better. <laughs> Dallas Goddard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, they uh, he was the squeaky wheel got got the grease. He was eight for one seventeen and one everything for this offense um the I'm, first I'm, drive was like all dallas goddard i'm happy with our discussion last week on the matchup previews about george kittle and dallas goddard about whether you whether you should play them or whether you should bench them and we basically said you need to you need to keep these guys in your lineup because there's there's just not a whole lot of tight ends out there that can do something like this and you don't want these performances on your bench sam laporta is the tight oh end gosh. won on the season because he cannot stop catching touchdowns. Only three for 47, but two more touchdowns. The guy is an absolute he's machine right now. Tight end one. I mean, he's unbelievable. And he's so good. This is – Dalton Kincaid? Yeah. I mean, who? You, you, don't like, you don't love four targets. But, again, this was a game that – This is the I, fewest I can't targets believe, he's had all season. I can't believe they – I can't believe Jared Goff had that many fantasy points, but touchdowns. Travis Kelsey, 10 for 67 and a touchdown. Logan Thomas, if Andy had been kind of the, the headmaster banging the drum there for Logan Thomas, and it was a huge week, 9 for 77 and 1. That was back on Thursday. The doctor. The doctor. The, the doctor, Dalton Schultz. Finally got back in the office. Well, well, well. Welcome back from vacation, <laughs> Dalton Schultz. He was on paid leave. 10 targets, 7 for 65, and a touchdown against Atlanta. That was, uh, I think, just shocking. Yep. Uh, Cole Komet caught another touchdown. What do you make of Darren Waller's performance? Oh, Darren Waller was 11 targets, 8 awesome. for 86. I, here's what I make of the performance. Absolutely awesome. Um, when you get 11 targets and you can get 86 yards, he was a wide receiver. If you were watching the game, yeah, he was straight. He wasn't he, playing tight end. He, yes, he, he was, just was playing wide receiver. He was playing lined up a ton on the outside. Yeah, and so um, the fact that the targets were there, his total line on, on the week was great. Um, I'm happy you made him a start of the week to give people confidence to play him. And one of his three missed targets was a difficult. Deep yeah. kind of bomb touchdown that just kind of went through his hands. I, I, you know, it was it was upsetting. I wouldn't call it like an egregious drop. It wasn't an easy catch, but if he pulls that in, it was probably a thirty yard touchdown. He was mm -hmm. falling into the end zone. So you take that out, and he still had a good game. So um, the question now becomes, what happens without Daniel Jones? Sure. Um, you know, we're not the largest Daniel Jones believer, but his backup is going to be worse. Uh, also had a great game with 11 targets. Kyle Pitts, 7 for 87. It's the first game with double-digit targets since week five of his rookie year. So uh, this it's, it's at least a situation to monitor. You do you. <laughs> it's a situation you do you. to monitor. Um, I will be monitoring this with my eyes closed. So some, some uh, kind of behind-the-scenes information that I saw was, you know, there's – there was the, uh, the the cut up film going around on social media of Kyle Pitts looking hurt, I uh, you know, maybe not hurt, but just not a not fully healthy like Kyle he, Pitts. I've never seen someone fall down on more routes ever. It was like three or four times last game where he just went to make a route and like his hand had to touch the ground. So someone had shared his next gen route tree from this weekend, and he, again a. I didn't dive super deep into it, but you can have a look for it. But everything was him turning left. Oh, really? Yes. So, as in, like, as in something he can't go right. Yeah, he he where his body is right now, he can't make a good hard cut to the right. So maybe they adjust. So they were forcing everything just to go to the left, and I don't know. It's that's why that's why I'm saying it's something to monitor. All right. The 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 my only hesitation to monitor it is that. Desmond Ritter looked so dang good this game. Like, he, yeah, he really – we talked about it, how good he looked. I, If we knew that that was sticky, then it's something to monitor. I just don't believe that – I mean, Desmond Ritter has looked as bad as he looked good every other game this season, and this was um, a home game against the Texans. All right. Not everyone had a good game. Pooped in his big boy pants. 
I <laughs> feel so bad about this. It's not fair. Uh, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, you were awesome. You had a great game. I mean, Lamar Jackson managers, I am so sorry. It's not your fault. It's not Lamar's fault. I've never seen a player play much better than he played. He was running the ball so well. He was throwing the ball so well, hitting guys open, mid middle of the field, deep shots, hitting guys right in the hands in the end zone. Seven yes. drops. So there was a uh, – we got Ravens were credited with seven drops. That's the third most since 2017 including two in the end zone, which it was – I think it was back-to-back -back plays. Those were back-to-back -back plays, yeah. Of Mark Andrews making a very non-characteristic drop. Not not a, not a like a layup catch, but it's – But it's one he Mark almost Andrews, always yeah, brings Mark up. Andrews is paid to make that catch, and he makes that catch. But then Bateman. And then, <laughs> then Rashad Bateman. <laughs> that was as bad a drop as exists. He just jumps up and has like a little lobbed ball into his hands. It, and He like went narcoleptic for a moment. <laughs> And did not catch the ball. Zay Flowers had or also included so two end zone drops, two more on throws of twenty plus yards that were perfect, e easy catches. Perfect. Uh, Aguilar. I mean, this is no surprise for Aguilar. You yeah, know, he's got yeah, a long yeah, history, yeah. but but he had a uh, just down the field, probably a huge bomb touchdown that just goes. I mean, you watch this goes whoosh, just right perfect through the hand. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it was, Mike. Lamar you Jackson know, threw you know, a swish. You know when you would play a game like when you're on the uh, the playground as a kid, you don't have a hoop, so someone has to yeah. put their hand, interlock their hands, mm -hmm. and make a hoop. That's, Aguilar that's did a great <laughs> job, a perfect hoop. Yeah, <laughs> three points. Just, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was it was. I, I'm not I'm not worried about Lamar Jackson's performance. It sucked. I mean, in, in the end, he had 236 passing yards, no touchdowns, an interception, uh, added 45. Uh, rushing I think he yards. also had a fumble too. And so he, it wasn't a good fantasy game at all. I know my son had him in uh, our league, kind of a crushing uh, performance. Yep. But don't be scared of it. No, no, this is not Lamar Jackson lost it or played bad. This was his receivers <laughs> completely pooped the bed. I don't know how it happened to everyone. <laughs> it was like, it, was it yeah. a contagious? There was, there was something bad in the Gatorade. Trevor Lawrence, who is the quarterback 17 on the season, this was a bizarre game for Super. Trevor Lawrence because statistically, 25 of 37, 315 passing yards, a touchdown, 31 yards on the ground. Like, it's not fantasy wise that those are good numbers. Yeah, but and his team won. But he he fumbled. He had some fumbles. Did he? Uh, yeah, in this game okay. that were very costly. I mean, they 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 did win the game, but it seemed like he was trying his best uh, to lose this yeah, a couple so of times. It, three, three fumbles. It is, yeah. So far, not working out for Trevor Lawrence. Also, who was my expensive Dak? And here they are yet again, back to back. Dak Prescott. Whew, brother, that was that game was a stinky. Yeah, he that, he I threw mean, the ball twenty four times. Twenty four times. A pu he threw the ball. Uh, to give you context, uh, what was it? Nineteen times was Jamar Chase targeted. So almost yes. an entire game's worth uh -huh. of Dak. It was terrible. I mean, the Niners, the whole the whole the Niners, Cowboys offense was they, putrid. They should go to jail for what they just did. <laughs> right to jail to, for, to these Cowboys. We are going to be talking about that was Tony, a crime. We'll be talking about Tony Pollard in just a second. C.J. Stroud. It was a down game for fantasy. Uh, Twenty for thirty-five, almost two hundred fifty yards. He Again, did have a, a touchdown, but great real life performance. Yeah, looked good. Came. He won the game. Like he he came down yes. had yeah, the game did, winning yeah. drive. Did everything you could ask for him to do, but then Desmond Ritter was too much on the other side, and he came back and got yeah. got him in position that's for that game-winning field goal. That's what they always say that about Desmond Ritter. He's just too much. You can't leave him that much time. Not not Ritter. Tony Pollard, eight for twenty-nine, four for thirty-five. He fumbled. Yeah, just the Cowboys did not get to play football. Yeah, just just throw that one in the garbage. But this is too, you know. It is bad. It, two, in a it's row. Two, that's two down games for, uh, for Tony Pollard. This one, you're putting the blame on the Cowboys' offense. Last week, you're putting the blame on the defense because they beat New England thirty-eight to three. So that was a, that one's a blowout. 
situation. I'm not worried about Tony Pollard. J, uh, JT's six for 18. He did have a target, 15% of the snaps. That sucked. Do we play him next week? We'll find out. Derrick Henry, snip, snap, snip, snap. Mm -hmm. We're back. Back on the bad game side of things. Um, 13 for 43. He did have three receptions. It's just, are they... They lost the did game. Did they win? Did yeah, did they, they win? Did they lose? I mean, we, we, we brought this up. He, he They dominated the Bengals the week prior, and so he had a monster game. They lost a pretty ugly game to the Colts, and now they're going to go play Baltimore. 13 so, carries. Is, that's just... It's so wild. Imagine... And Tajay... Uh, Tajay Spears, yeah. I, he was in the studs. I had bypassed it, but I mean, he had a nice, yeah. uh, a nice long touchdown run. James Cook, hold on to your hats and your glasses because I need to make sure that this stat line is correct. Five attempts. That in and of itself is very bad. Yeah, you're like, oh, man, what happened? Negative four yards. That's worse. He had negative four yards on the ground? Yeah. Oh, brother. But he got it done in the passing game. Three for 25. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, it was a it was a really really bad game for the Bills in general. Like I know fantasy wise, we talked about Diggs was great, Allen was great, Gabe Davis was great, but but it wasn't that way for the Bills. The Bills got off in this London game to the slowest start imaginable, um, looked bad, and so they weren't really they they were quickly down and they didn't really run the ball much in the first half. They didn't really get a lot of offensive opportunities. Like, time of possession in the first half, feel like it just was deleted for the Bills, and then they come out in the second half down by quite a bit, and they've got to throw a bunch of deep shots. And so it was like, it really, I mean, deep. They were just airing it out to, to Gabe Davis and Diggs down the field, um, and so it wasn't really a situation that allow James Cook to do anything he does. He's been getting a ton of volume in the running game, but they weren't up. They didn't have the ball until they had to throw it deep. But if you look at it, he still played 62% of the snaps. The next highest in the backfield was tied. Damian Harris and Latavius Murray, each with 18% of the snaps. I'm not worried about this game. Like This is, to me, an opportunity where that stinks. It's terrible, but if you want to try to trade for James Cook. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is your opportunity off of the back of something like this. Speaking of trading four, the, we are now uh -huh. we're I'm, now in the zone. Ramond, st Ramondre Stevenson, another absolute stinker. Two point four fantasy points, two targets, no catches. Played fifty percent of the snaps. The, those have gone. His snap share has gone down essentially every single week. Now. It was another blowout for the New England Patriots. This one, I think this one's worse. If what's worse, losing thirty-eight to three or losing thirty-four to zero? Thirty-four to zero. But yeah, getting yeah, shut out. Sure. Yeah, I agree. So the Saints defense just I mean, You don't feel good about the three <laughs> points, but like, don't hear what we're not saying. <laughs> they're both bad. These are like the two worst, you know, losses for Bill Belichick ever, and they're back to back. Uh, both weeks, Mac Jones getting benched. Now they came out and said he's still the starter. They benched him because the, the you know the yes. game was out of hand. Um, it's bad, bad news right now. Um, th they play the Raiders next, right? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, we go Raiders, Buffalo, Miami, Washington, Colts. My and my only worry with Ramondre because I've been talking about how he's going to have a bad week last week. He had a bad week. A bad week this week. He had a bad week, and then I'm going to trade for him. Three of the next four weeks, he's got really plus matchups. Um, my only worry with doing that is simply the fact that he was injured this last week, and I worry a little bit yeah, he about was, he was on the injury report. about that. Like I don't know how much of the snap percentages this week. It was pretty much fifty fifty with Zeke snap count wise, where it's been like even the the previous week he was sixty four percent of the snaps to forty percent for Zeke. So I just don't know how much the injury plays into that versus you know, he it, performance. My biggest concern is that they aren't throwing the ball to him. Right. Like his receiving yardage, here's uh, week one was great, 64 yards on six catches. But since then, 10 yards, three yards, 10 yards, none. Uh, he's sitting at a, a, what have we got, a 10% target share. I mean, it, and it is – so bizarre because it's like the wide receivers are not overwhelming. Like it, 
you don't like you're not like well they they have two superstars now who they got to feed the targets to we got it's hunter henry's at the tight end position i think did he get shut out i can't like he had another bad yeah, game yeah hunt well hunter henry had i mean the, the patriots of, got shut out period he, so. had a, he had a remember that really good route he put the defender yes, on and then had and a bomb and, where it would have been like a decent fan it probably 40 50 yards but got overthrown yes so that is the concern but i do think that there is a there is a world where Ramondre stevenson because his value is low 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 yeah i i think that he could be someone who they figure out the offense that bounces back it's risky but I, i'm gonna i'm gonna kick the tire still i'm i but the whole point of this was not just because he's going to be awesome. It's because because he's going to be cheap. Ramondre right, Stevenson yes. managers right now probably want to cut him. They don't want to start him. They want to bench him. Everything I saw was I'm benching Ramondre Stevenson from here on out. When you're talking to a manager who doesn't want to start the player and wants to bench him and is looking for permission, they'll take just about anything. They'll you know if there's a startable wide receiver on your roster like a you know a a, a guy who scored a couple weeks in a row and he's like oh yeah it's start you. Just offer that straight up. Miles Sanders, another down game. It was the Detroit Lions, but this timeshare has been in Chuba's favor while Miles Sanders has been dealing with his groin injury. But, I mean, he he seems unplayable at this point. There's just too high risk. Brian Robinson, the, he had the dud on Thursday night. I'm, I'm throwing that game away. Kyron Williams, he is human after all. 13 for 53 on the ground, only two targets. Uh, which turned into two receptions for four yards. He did play 84% of the snaps. He was limited on Wednesday's practice report with the, I think, with the hip. So we weren't exactly sure. Will he have the full allotment of snaps? Will Ronnie Rivers eat into his workload a little bit more? But it was all Kyron. He just, uh, who knows? Maybe maybe he has a problem now that Cooper Cup. Like, yeah, I mean, maybe it, Cooper Cup took away just from him, but not from Puka. Well, well you know, I, I think the, the issue here is – we, we talked about with Stafford. Stafford's been awesome. He's been great. It's just the touchdowns have come in on the ground. And so you look at like, okay, uh, last week against Indy, two touchdowns for Kyron. He was running at 4.1 yards a carry, but he got two touchdowns. Had a great fantasy game. Right. This last week, 4.1 yards a carry, still the majority of the snaps. All the usage metrics were the same. He just he didn't get in the end zone. It wasn't the right matchup for that. So I'm not I'm not worried about him at all. And he gets Arizona this coming week. Matt Burrito farts <laughs> nine for twenty one. I think it's it we'll see if Barkley's back, but based off of some timelines, it's it seems like it. So thank you for your service, Matt Burrito. Najee Harris. Man, dude. Fourteen for thirty seven. I mean he could he just Yeah. He just is a lumbering pile of Yeah. Logs. <laughs> I mean, the lumber and the logs. That's oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I see. I see how you got there. There is, there is good news with Najee. Um, if you're please, wanting, please share it with. If me. you're wanting the bright side, uh, they are on buy. <laughs> nice. So you, he that can't, is. he can't, hurt, he cannot hurt your roster this week. Like, I, I have been benching Najee Harris in a dynasty league. I know, right? Yeah, like, I mean. A dynasty league, I, which, ladies I, and gentlemen, if you have two startable running backs in a dynasty league, you're you're like heck yeah, I uh -huh. do. <laughs> I've been benching yeah, Najee. I've been benching him in, whenever possible in like two and three flex leagues because I mean he is. Oh man, he has one game right he, now. He over, burned too bright over six and a half fantasy points on the season. He burned and he's, too bright. He's been getting the the usage enough, you know, twenty opportunities 16 opportunities 20 opportunities he's just he's not good and uh Jalen Warren three of the last four weeks has been a top 24 running back at the position he's yep. he he gets just a few fewer opportunities per week but he does so much more I, with it I think we're there I think we are I, I think we've talked about do you are you starting Warren over Najee but yeah I, we I think like it's it's done you have to start Warren if you're choosing between the two Devonta Smith. Oh man, I traded for him this week. Another. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully the re the rest of my lineup came through. I was all right, but oh, one that felt for bad. six. Unfortunate because it felt like this would be a great matchup for him. But AJ Brown and Dallas Goddard. I mean, what the the whole first drive is Dallas Goddard. I think by the end of the first drive, 
which ended in a touchdown. Dallas Goddard had more DraftKings points than Mark than Andrews. Mark Andrews. He had in he the had first drive. Two or three more on, on that first drive. And, and Mark Andrews had a fine day. Yeah. CeeDee Lamb, four for 49. This the, the Cowboys passing offense, like Mike McCarthy was riding high off of his defensive performances. It was, I think, masking the fact that he's the offensive play caller. They, I mean, he shipped uh, his OC out of town, and he said, I'm going to be the one handling everything, and that handling of everything is an average depth of target for Dak that before this past week, at least, I don't know what the updated numbers are, before this past weekend, his ADOT was third worst, third lowest in the NFL. That is dis that is destructive to fantasy output. And CeeDee Lamb has has managed to give us a couple good games here and there, but he right now Lamb is having to overcome the offensive play calling and the position that he has been put in. It is pretty disheartening right now. Garrett Wilson, the mm. titanium underpants for the Jets passing attack. It was not enough. Uh, Brees Hall stole it all. He we, did well, and and Zach Wilson just it. I I thought he'd be able to do more against the Broncos, and he he could not. It was funny. Our draft, it was an evenly matched passing attack. Our our DraftKings lineups from our Friday show. Um, we we talked about how similar they were. We had so much overlap. Yep. And yet, where we differed was. I mean, I thought it was like, well, e either one of us, like, we're just playing against Andy. Uh, because you had Garrett Wilson, I had yep. Brees Hall. It was how do they score? It was, and it went, it went. It my, went Brees Hall's went, way. Pre <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Brandon Ayuk ended up with a not great game because of uh, George Kittle. So, look, Christian McCaffrey managers and Brandon Ayuk managers, we are, our, our Venn diagram is overlapping right now. Michael Pittman. Five for 52, it's an okay game. He should see better days if Gardner Minshew is forced into the to the lineup. And it seems like Gardner will be playing for probably the next month, so Pittman is... Far more targets. Yeah. Nico Collins, Boyd, Cortland Sutton, not great games. Hunter Henry, after the huge first few weeks... <laughs> Whoops-a-doozles. Tyler Higby mm. got all that cash. Did not turn into fantasy production, two not for 20. back. TJ Hawkinson, five for fifty. That's fine. It, it, he's he That's all fine. right. He, five for fifty one. But my guy Schmevin Schmangram, he finally had a down game. Eight targets. That's good. I'll take that, but four for twenty eight is that's not gonna get it. Yeah. Oh, uh, we made it through. We, we got, did it. We got one more game tonight. I hope you get what you need on tomorrow's show. It's going to be waivers. A lot of injuries, a lot of bye weeks, so there will be players that we gotta talk through. Like do, what a lot we, of interesting names this week. Are we putting Kyle Pitts back on the bench? We'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> You'll have to find out again. Uh, drop us a review wherever you are listening to the show and follow us on those socials. That is going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, for Jay Grizz, Jason Moore, the nastiest of the nasty, the deucers, I am Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright. Enjoy the game tonight. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.